Hey there, guitar fanatics. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a very cool pentatonic trick that every guitarist should know. But what I find is that most guitarists don't use this trick at all. And if they do use it, they're not using it as well as they could. This lesson literally has the potential to change your playing forever, to make you sound smoother, more polished, and more professional. It's also gonna help you sound way more expressive and more connected to the music you're playing over when you play guitar solos. I can't wait to show you this technique. And I'm gonna show you some of the most useful and practical ways to practice that you may have ever seen. So let's get in there and play some guitar. Now, before I tell you exactly what we're gonna be learning today, I wanna to play something for you to demonstrate and see if you can hear the difference. I'm gonna be playing over a four chord backing track and I'm gonna play eight bars with the first four bars being the before section and the next four bars being the after section. So you'll have that for comparison. So check this out. Did you catch what was going on there? Now, I don't think the first four bars sounded bad, but the second four bars definitely sounded better to my ears. Now this backing track, it's in the key of A and it's got the chords F sharp minor, D, A, and E. And here's the big reveal. The first four bars, I played notes only from the A major pentatonic scale. In the second four bars, I changed pentatonic scales to match each chord that was being played. And as a result, I was able to nail the chord tones of each chord in the progression. I had more note choices available to me, and the result is a more polished, sweeter sounding solo. Let me show you not only the hows and the whys of changing the pentatonic scale to match each chord that you're playing over, but also how to practice it so you can really start to master this concept. And when we get into the theory behind this a little bit, I think you're gonna have a really big aha moment. It's gonna connect the pentatonic scales with other concepts you've probably heard of like chord tone soloing and triads. So let's talk a little theory. Hey, on a serious note, I've been noticing lately that 75% of the people that watch my videos, they haven't subscribed to the channel. It would really help me out if you could hit that subscribe button. Okay, back to the lesson. As we mentioned earlier, the backing track is in the key of A, and the notes of the A major scale are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and it brings us back to our root A. Now, we get A major pentatonic by dropping the D and the G sharp, so the notes of A major pentatonic, we've got A, B, C sharp, E, F sharp, and then we're back to A. And we can do a lot with those five notes. You know, one of the big ways that you're gonna become a better lead guitar player is by paying closer attention to the notes in the chords that you're soloing over. And the notes of the A major pentatonic scale have all the chord tones of two of the chords that we're playing over in our progression. The A major chord has the notes A, C sharp, and E, and so does A major pentatonic. The F sharp minor chord has the notes F sharp, A, and C sharp, and so does A major pentatonic. So another way to look at it is to say that the A major pentatonic scale contains the triads, or all three notes of A major and the F sharp minor chords. One of the concepts that we'll be coming across if we haven't heard of it yet is what we call chord tone soloing. And it's kind of a fancy way of saying that your solos are gonna sound better if you make sure to stop on or highlight the notes of the chords that you're soloing over. The awesome thing about using the A major pentatonic scale over the A chord and the F sharp minor chord and those two chords are called relative major and minor, is that the notes of those chords are embedded in the scale already. 
but that isn't the case when we get to the D or the E major chords. As a matter of fact, even though we're only missing one of the chord tones from D and E, we're probably missing two of the most important notes that we can play over those chords. So the D major chord has the notes D, F sharp, and A. A major pentatonic has F sharp and A, but there's no D note. So if we only use A major pentatonic over a D chord, we can't play the root note. Now the E major chord has the notes E, G sharp, and B. A major pentatonic has E and B, but there's no G sharp. Now G sharp is the major third of E, and the third interval is such an expressive note. The sound of it is really missed when it isn't there. So let me propose a solution, and the solution is to simply change the scale you're playing when the chord changes. And while this might seem a little daunting if you haven't done it before, it might be simpler than you think. First of all, A major pentatonic, F sharp minor pentatonic, they're the same scale. So you can use that, those two scales interchangeably over either one of those two chords. Now D and E are the four and five chords in the key of A major, and their respective pentatonic scale patterns sit right on top of all the A major or F sharp minor pentatonics in all five boxes up and down the neck of the guitar. So with all that being said, let's do some playing, and I know this is gonna to start to make good sense to you. Let me show you a couple of ways to practice changing scales that will help you get really smooth with this skill. We're gonna cover the entire fretboard going pentatonic box to pentatonic box. So let's get started down in the second position with F sharp minor pentatonic pattern one, or we could call it A major pentatonic pattern five, and that would work over the F sharp minor chord. Now here's something I wanna mention quickly because it's something I'm always reminding students about. Just because a scale fits over a chord doesn't mean you can just run through the scale and it's gonna sound amazing. Sometimes it's really cool to run scales because you might be trying to express something through speed, but ultimately you still need to find a way to highlight chord tones in your licks and lines to make them sound really connected to the chords you're playing over. We'll talk about that more shortly because we're gonna be making up some licks. But for now, let's just map out the fretboard. F sharp minor pattern one and A major pattern five look like this. And check this out, D major pattern three sits right here in the same spot. We don't even have to change positions. And E major pattern two is right here without changing positions also. So we've got everything we need to nail all four chords of the progression, and we don't even have to change positions. Now we're gonna start off ascending through each scale, and we're gonna be playing 16th notes. And I'll play over the backing track, and I'll also put a tab up to make it easy for you to play along with. So here we go. Okay, let's move up to the fifth fret, and here's the pattern for F sharp minor and A major pentatonic. If you keep in score, that was F sharp minor pentatonic pattern two and A major pentatonic pattern one. So we've got D major pattern four right here also. And to play E major pattern three, we started the G sharp at the fourth fret, and here's our shape. Okay, let's try these shapes over the backing track. Now on to the seventh fret. We've got F sharp minor and A major with this shape. We've also got D major pentatonic pattern five right here at the seventh fret. 
And here's E major pattern four at the seventh fret also. Let's have a listen to these patterns over the backing track. Now, if we move up to the ninth fret, we have these shapes for F sharp minor and A major. We've got D major pattern one that starts on the D note at fret 10. And we've got E major pattern five at the ninth fret also. Lastly, at the 12th fret, we have this shape for F sharp minor and A major. We've got D major pattern two, and it looks like this. An E major pentatonic pattern one. Let's have a listen to those along with our backing track. Okay, so as you can see, all the way up the fretboard, our patterns literally overlap. So it's really easy just to stay in one position and still play through the chord changes properly. Now to this point, we've been ascending through each pattern and that's maybe the best way to get started with the concept. Now there are three other ways that I'm gonna recommend that you practice to really get these things ingrained and get you ready to take what so far has been a really clinical sounding exercise and start turning it into really good sounding licks and solos. The first variation is to start at the highest note of each pattern and to descend through the scale. So that's the exact opposite of what we've been doing. I've noticed not only with my students, but with my own practicing, it's really easy to get in the habit of starting at the lowest note of the scale and always ascend from there. So we're gonna shake that up a little bit. Let's start up at the F sharp minor pentatonic at the 14th fret. We're gonna play over the backing track and this exercise sounds like this. Now, once we get used to descending through the patterns, we're gonna shake things up again. This time, we're gonna ascend through F sharp minor. We're gonna descend through D major pentatonic. We're gonna ascend through A major pentatonic, and then we're gonna descend through E major pentatonic. You know when you hear great solos that all the notes aren't moving in a single direction. This exercise will get you used to changing directions in your lines, and that's gonna sound a lot more like what we would play if we were playing an actual solo. Let's stay with that F sharp minor pentatonic pattern one up at the 14th fret, and we're gonna move on from there. It sounds like this, check it out. For our last practice variation, we're gonna get really crazy. This variation is designed to get you moving up and down the neck horizontally, which is also more like what we might do if we're playing an actual solo. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change positions every time the chord changes. So the first chord, it's F sharp minor. We're gonna play F sharp minor pentatonic down to the second fret. The second chord is D major. We're gonna to move to the fifth fret. We're gonna play D major pentatonic there. The next chord's A major. We're gonna move up to the seventh fret, play A major pentatonic. The last chord is E major. We're gonna move up to the ninth fret and play E major from there. Now I'm gonna play along with the backing track and I'm gonna play through the changes twice. The first time through, 
I'm going to start with F sharp minor pentatonic at the second fret and work my way up the fretboard. Second time through, I'm going to start with F sharp minor up at the 14th fret and work my way down the fretboard. I'll put up a fretboard chart for each scale so you can see what's going on at all times. Okay, here we go. Awesome. Now that last variation had a lot going on, but I think once you've got a grasp on the basics, it's the best kind of practicing that you can do. We're not only moving across, but up and down the fretboard. We're having to remember the different patterns as we change positions in real time. And that's the kind of practicing that leads to what I call fluency. And that's where you can go anywhere on the fretboard and whatever you need to play, it's just there for you. And if you want to have that kind of freedom, to move around the fretboard, well, you've got to practice this way. And so what is all this leading to? Well, hopefully better, smoother sounding and more interesting guitar solos where what you play sounds really connected to the music that you're playing over. So what do you say? We dig in even a little deeper and we talk about how to take what we've been learning and turn it into really great sounding licks and guitar solos. So let me revisit a statement that I made earlier that just running a scale, even if it's the scale that matches the chord that you're playing over perfectly, it doesn't always translate into you sounding like you really know how to outline those chords you're playing over. So the last piece of this puzzle that we've been putting together today is to talk about how to structure our licks and lines to highlight those important notes of the chords. Now we know the triad of each chord is in the scales that we've been practicing, so we just have to structure our licks to make those notes stand out. And it isn't rocket science. So I'm going to break down the second four bars of the solo that I played near the intro. Let's take the first chord of the progression, which is F sharp minor. We know the notes of that chord are F sharp, which is the root, A, which is the minor third, and C sharp, which is the fifth. Of the three, the third interval is going to be the most expressive sounding note. And the root, of course, really brings home the sound of the chord. So if we look at what I played over F sharp minor, and let's look at it now in terms of intervals. I started with an A ascending run at the A at the 14th fret of the G string, which is that minor third. And we're going to play up to the A at the 17th fret of the E string. And we bend that up to B. So those intervals are the minor third again, and the B note is the fourth of F sharp minor. And if we play only chord tones, things start to sound a little bit boring. So it's important to throw that fourth in there to create a little tension. And then we end that lick by playing the minor third again, and then the root or F sharp. So we did have a little scale run. We got that minor third in there a couple of times. The bend up to the non chord tone, and we finished on the root. So we have all the elements we need for a good expressive guitar lick. Now transitioning to the D chord, we're going to bend up the 15th fret of the B string a whole step. That's E to F sharp, and that's the second and major third of D. And then we're going to hit the 17th fret of the high E, which is A or the fifth of D. And that's a little pedal steel bend. We let off that bend and we set on that E or the second momentarily. And then we play our root and the second again. And then we slide from the fifth to the sixth and back at frets 14 and 16 on the G string. And then we play those two notes again. And we finish by sliding from the second to the major third at frets 14 and 16 on the D string. And those notes are E and F sharp. So over that chord, we worked in a cool bend that incorporated both the third and the fifth. 
and we played the second and the sixth, and we ended things with the major third, which, as we've mentioned, is the sweetest, probably most emotional sounding note that we can play over a major chord. Cool. Now that brings us to the A chord. And over that chord, we're gonna play a long 16th note triplet run that's made up of a repeating shape that starts at the E of the 12th fret of the low E. We're gonna play frets 12 and 14 on the low E, followed by frets 12 and 14 on the A string, and then we slide into fret 16. So that little shape, it has all five notes of the A major pentatonic, so it contains three notes of A major chord, plus the second and the sixth of A. And that shape is gonna repeat starting at the E of the 14th fret of the D string. We play frets 14 and 16 of the D, and 14 and 16 of G, and then we would slide into fret 18. But before we make that slide into fret 18, we're gonna go back to fret 16 of the D string and play that note plus frets 14 and 16 of the G string again, and then slide into fret 18. And we played those notes over because we needed a few more notes to make the lick fit. You'll get an instinct for that as you practice this stuff. Our shape repeats again, starting at frets 17 and 19 of both the B and E strings. And we finish off by bending fret 19 of the high E up a whole step. We're bending B to C sharp, so we're bending the second of A to the major third. So once again, we're ending a lick over a major chord with the sweetest sounding note that we could play over it. Now right before we transition to the E chord, we've got that B note bent up to C sharp. We're gonna let off the bend, play the B note and play the A note. We're still over the A, co A chord. Now, to go to the E, we make our bend up to C sharp again. That is the sixth of E, and we let off or release that bend back to the B note. That's the fifth of E, so it's a chord tone. Then we do that pedal steel bend again. We're gonna bend up the 19th fret of the B string, which is F sharp or the second. We're gonna bend that up to G sharp, which is our major third. We hit our fifth again, play the major third, and let off the bend to the second and then go to our E root at the 17th fret of the B string. And we're gonna finish by bending that F sharp at the 19th fret up a whole step again. So that's the second to the major third. Then we're heading back into our F sharp minor chord. So we release our bend from G sharp back down to F sharp, which is the root note of our next chord. So it actually sounds like we know what we're doing. So there you have it, a system for playing through chord changes with pentatonic shapes, a way to practice it, and some ideas about which notes are most important to highlight in your solos and why. Now, here's another video you should check out that has more great ideas about how to get started playing through chord changes. Check it out, because it's really gonna build on what we discussed today. I wish you all the best with your playing. I'll see you again soon.